Previously on Frame by Frame. Yeah, I think I think we've spoken enough. Huh? Yeah. Hang on a second. What's that? Who's that outside your window? Is that? Is that? No, That's, no, no. Is that the ex? Is, is that the Spice Girls? No, no, no. They don't. No, look. Oh my God, who's that? Press. That's a sport. She looks a bit sporty. She looks a bit posh. You got a ginger one. Scurry no, one. This is this is not right. Baby one. Come on. What are they doing? What are they putting masks on? Oh my God, they're coming over here. They're coming over here. Oh my God, they're in. Quick, just grab everything. What? Oh my god! What do you want? What is it? No, no one really grab me! No! No! Don't become one! What do you mean to become one? What? What? You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Then like, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how and you're funny like a clown. I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Oh, oh my head. Oh. Oh. What's that? Right. I... Andy, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Right, just... If you don't know this from the last um, episode, um, we've been abducted by the Spice Girls. And, and they're holding us captive in some sort of some sort of dungeon and it's um, like a big cave of some kind with, with instruments on the wall and torture and yeah we just keep hearing screams and um oh spice girls music yeah it's very eerie but uh, i keep on i keep on nodding off scurry oh. did hit you in the head really really hard yeah luckily i had a um, baby who sort of took me so she kind of mothered me and then oh. and then and then until she put me into this place yeah. this is no place for a baby she hit you with a mittens she did i, I remember yeah and yeah a pig, and she whipped me with her pigtails oh damn it got it got in my eye got a little bit of a little bit of a weird but sort of you you did have uh, you know i'm so glad because you had the first thought let's make sure that we don't forget to bring the equipment exactly or the coffee because we thought <laughs> there might be a podcast in this Oh, oh my coffee is cold. <laughs> Damn those Spice Girls! The hell! <laughs> but <laughs> no, don't don't cry, don't cry. Try and th try and think of um. Sure. <laughs> try and try and think of a. a, a f is there a film that made you feel like you feel right now in the, in this? Oh. You know, it's sort of like dark, dark and it's water. And I can't see daylight. A bit disturbing. The only thing I can think of is Seven with, by David Fincher, but that's an old film. But it's a good film. It's 20 years old, can you believe it? You are kidding me, isn't it? And I'm sure everybody's seen it, but it's that it's it's the Morgan Freeman. Yeah, God is in this film. Brad Pitt. He thinks he's God. Well, he is now that he's not returned to any job. I meant Morgan Freeman. But oh, he is God. God, yes. God is in this film. Yeah. But Seven has a trailer, so let's, uh, you know, while we... Look, luckily, the Spice Girls have supplied us with a laptop, so let's, yeah, let's, let's watch, watch, the watch the trailer. Yeah. Do you like what you do for a living? These things you see? You have to wear blinders sometimes. Most times. Detective William Somerset is looking for a way out. You're retiring. Six more days and you're all the way gone. So how long have you lived here? Too long. Detective David Mills is looking for a way in. We'll be spending every waking hour together from now until the time I leave. I'll show you who your friends and enemies are. Look, I'm going to come inside five years. Not here. Now, is he to have a sort of homicide? 
They're caught in a game. No fingerprints and no witnesses of any kind. Nope. About the only thing we know about that guy right now is he's totally insane. Where the price of sin is death. There are seven deadly sins. Gluttony. You're going to come take a look at this. Greed. No one touches anything. Sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Seven. You can expect five more of these. Body was found on Tuesday morning. I hate this city. We're gonna get who did this. This will be the very definition of swift justice. There are two more bodies, two more victims. This guy's methodical, exacting, and worst of all, patient. He's laughing at us. He, he had a gun. He's two murders away from completing his masterpiece. Hey! Let's finish it. Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, Gwyneth Paltrow. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Seven. Wild up trailers. It's dark. It's short and dark. Yeah, it's sort of like um, it's kind of like the film, <laughs> but, but shorter. It sort of made me want to watch the film because yeah, it, 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 even though we've seen it already, trailers seem to have that, that effect on people. It's almost that's what they're designed to do. It's very clever. Yeah. Very clever. Why am I out of breath? I think we could be at high altitude here. I feel a bit lightheaded and a bit short of breath myself. Let's talk about this film. Well, yeah, while we're here, we might as well do something. Okay. So let's do a review. I mean, you brought the equipment here and coffee. Yeah. Well, okay. go on then. Tell me, tell me about Seven. Well, Seven is. Um, it was. I think it was the second film by David Fincher. He had done before then uh, Alien Three. Right. Um, which but this was his follow. -up. This so. was his big follow-up, and I think oh. that's probably the best follow-up that anybody could ever have. Yeah, say so. Seven is is one of those dark films that you will you can you don't mind watching over and over again, and in, in its most sinister darkness, you, there's so much light in there, and it's uh, you know I love it. I love the look. I love the feel. Um, this I, is a, another one of those films that it gets under your skin. While you're watching it. It's unapologetically yeah. uh, insidious. Yeah. It creeps over you. Um, but you still don't turn it. I've, I've never ever switched it off. No. Um, and I've always watched it in the dark. It's never been. It's never scared me. It's just fascinated me. Right. It's a film about the seven deadly sins. Yeah, yeah. A serial killer is um, murdering people who he believes has committed one of the seven sins, isn't it? Yeah. Which. Um, fascinatingly you know you'd think you know that that that's just a typical you know after this once once he's got to the sixth mm -hmm. they're bound to capture him on the seventh and you know one person will be alive and that will just ruin his yeah whole. exactly you, there's so many assumptions you can have yeah because being a mainstream film you do assume that everything could turn out rosy in the end yeah yeah and at that time hollywood was kind of getting into that whole twist thing you know where yeah. they it, it, where, uh, for example, I mean, the, the worst film for this, the worst twist, is it, I mean, this is the film with the worst twist ever, Along Came the Spider, when throughout the whole film they play Monica Potter's character as this innocent, and all of a sudden it, she's revealed to be the killer at the end, and all of a sudden she just starts pretending to act, act like she's a killer at yeah. the end. And it's just the most unbelievable twist you know, he's, he's was Morgan Freeman in that as well? He was also in that. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was the thriller twist season of, of films that was going on. Right. A decade of, of twisty films. Well, it's, I think the twisty film thing is still not finished with um, Gone Girl, which I think is a David Fincher film. Oh, well. Did you hear that? That's something. Bad guy. That high pitched voice is Mickey. Something like Mickey Mouse. We could work really and the hard. Spice Girls. What's he doing? You know what this is? It's because we were talking about the Illuminati last week. Oh my gosh! The Illuminati are taking us. You were a goner. 
Oh, what? Of, of course, the Spice Girls are part of the Illuminati. All the symbolism in those films, two become one and all that. I think so. Two become one. Oh my gosh. Well, I have no idea what that means, but it sounds bad. Yeah. It is David Fincher. Ah, brilliant. Ah, I thought it was actually directed by Ben Affleck as well. I can't no, 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 no. he was smothering himself again. But yeah, there's a big twist oh, at the end of twist. Gone Girl. But again, Gone Girl is a really good film. Recommend oh. you watch it. It's very good. Yeah, because I, I mean, I love David Fincher films. Yeah, he's, a, he's an artist. He's an energetic artist as well. He doesn't... Mm. Uh, his films don't seem to have any loss of energy in them. They're always pumping. Yeah. Always good. Um, and he seems to have an impeccable, incredible eye for, um, eye for detail. And he was he was ever so young as well. He was such a young director. Kind of like Ridley Scott in a way, where they started off being a, a director who people didn't have a lot of faith in. And then he just blew people away with his uh, with his technical skill. Yeah. And in Seven, um, he... He took the detective film noir genre to a, a higher level yeah. by taking it deeper and darker down. Um, not to say that it was actually, you know, uh, he just removed the light altogether. He just simply reinvented light in a way. Right. Uh, and the darkness, I mean, black was black. I mean, that's what he said in the, in the whole thing about um, the lighting. It, You know, he, he didn't want people to kind of see the blackness oh someone what's that one of the spice girls is having a shower oh, oh no. my god it's hideous <laughs> oh, oh god just, just don't look don't 20 look. years ago it might have been but not now <laughs> not now look they haven't been looking after themselves yeah. okay okay so, well, so, uh, saying yeah, that this was his second film and then yeah. alien 3 being the first film he did He's certainly got some really heavyweight actors to take on the uh, to take on the part, the roles. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Brad Pitt was was the, one of the hottest. Uh, the height of his powers, then. Wasn't the height he? of his yeah. Um, you got Morgan Freeman you know, again, massive. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yes, she was just climbing then. Yeah. She wasn't uh, at, the, at the the peak of her game because I didn't even know who she was until. That oh time. right, but and it's yeah, it's just before then she did Shakespeare in Love and then she. Right. Yeah, I think she was living with Winona animation. Ryder at the time. Stealing things. No, no, no. Well, no, she was actually... Who, who stole? Yeah, actually, you're right. Gwyneth Paltrow was stealing things. Great. Because uh, she... Yeah, uh, apparently. And this is the this is the uh, the the, uh, the myth. Was that uh, Winona Ryder and Gwyneth Paltrow were working together, or living together in the same apartment, sharing an apartment. And um, a script came through for Winona Ryder for Shakespeare in Love. Gwyneth Paltrow took it. And, and uh, she went and auditioned instead, got wow. the part, and Winona Ryder had no idea, and apparently there was a big rift and they fell out. I'm not surprised. And uh, it, it turned Winona Ryder into a very distrustful uh, woman indeed, who, uh, and of course I think where Paltrow had extremely uh, got, got, you know, what felt as though that, um, because Winona Ryder became that, that uh, renowned for her shoplifting abilities yeah. <laughs> or lack of abilities <laughs> that's uh you know I, th I think that they kind of both came off uh you know i think gwen Patrick came off much better than when i'm a rider unfortunately in that whole scenario well wow. so there you go that's an interesting thing but that's, that's hollywood it. for you that is and but, they've, uh, never, they've the, never been in the same sense so well the other obviously main guy in um seven is kevin spacey Yes, or the unbuild. The unbuild, and he said that himself, didn't he? he said, yeah. "You can't put my name at the beginning of this film because yes. if you do, they will know who, you know, that yeah. I am the the bad guy in it." You know. But it's it's quite funny because you you know it's him when he appears in the in the police. Uh, he comes walking in. He's coming in blood. He goes, "Detective!" No, like, Detective. After this, I'm Detective. gone. No big surprise. Detective! You're looking for me. And so, there's no question of it, he is John Doe. Yeah. So it didn't really matter if Kevin Spacey's name was at the beginning or not. People didn't really know who he was then. The thing is, cause it's the reveal. I th no, he did, because he don't... I think act, you know, people were a fan of sort of... Um... Oh, they've had the shower. They've had the shower. Were they all together? Oh, I just, I, I just saw like a, a mess of flesh, and I just feel revolted. So yeah, Kevin Spacey. I think if um, you'd seen like you know Brad Pitt, Morgan Freeman, 
we're in the final show, Kevin Spacey. And you don't see and him. And you don't see him. You'd be waiting. It would have some sort of effect with the film. I, I believe that. Yeah, You'd be waiting. Well, right. When's Kevin Spacey going to turn up if he's in this film? It was a good instinct. Yeah. It was a good instinct. And I think that, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, but what a role for. You know what? There's nothing to put you in good spirits. It is to have a good old laugh about Kevin Spacey in the Seven movie whilst being held, held captive by the Spice Girls and yeah, the Illuminati. Who's... Yeah, you know, you gotta have, you gotta laugh. You've gotta, you, yeah, you exactly. Gotta laugh, You've gotta you know. gallows humor. That's what it is. Gallows humor, yeah. 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 Well, you need that. I mean, but Seven does have humor in it, though. It does, it, even in the most when inappropriate um, moments. Yeah, that guy <laughs> who just been forced to um, s- screw that prostitute with um, the dildo from hell, which is That's essentially it. just a dagger. The way he acts it, he's in Alien Three as well. Was that... Uh, no, he's not. He's an, he's an alien resurrection, I think. Oh. But he essentially plays the same part of hysterical crying man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that is probably the most distorted part of the film, and you have to really look at it to figure out what went on. And as soon as you look at it, it's gone. You've moved yeah, on. Yeah, because when you see, like, okay. you see the dildo like a knife, it's, it's horrific. And to know that he just screwed this prostitute with wearing that, but now he's just this hysterical mess. And the way it's acted and played out, it's funny. <laughs> And you know, because I did the first time I watched it, I found it, I was like laughing at his performance and the way it all was, and I was thinking, I shouldn't be finding this funny, this wasn't wrong. Actually, wasn't that, that, was, that wasn't what I was thinking, was the funny part. Oh, and to, my to think, that, to think that you actually think that's funny. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean, it is, it, it's disturbing humour. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's like a sloth on the bed waking up after Ooh. being lying, having, having lied there for a whole year having photographs taken of himself every single day uh, in a deteriorating I mean that poor guy he, doesn't, he won't come back he won't bounce back to life with that <laughs> no, you take a bit of therapy to get over that kind of stuff <laughs> imagine a sloth just going through therapy and being re, re, taken out into the world again imagine there's like um, like a rehab there's like about ten of them in a circle <laughs> If my name's such a thing, I was tied to a bed and forced, but I had been taking sure. photographs for a year. And then the next guy's like, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it would be rude. <laughs> I mean, like, and then half of them just leaves and says, well, I tell you what, I, I, my problem's not as bad as that guy. I'm fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm going to need a job interview at Ikea. So so, so you, you've had a bit of rehab. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just had... Um... <laughs> Can I turn the light on? Is that all right? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Kill him! Okay. Can we get a mop, please? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, that was probably... Not, that was the first time I was actually quite... Uh, that I was disturbed and humoured at the same yeah. time in a movie. It was it was like, oh my god, what the hell has happened? And I had no idea. I didn't yeah. think for one second he was gonna, he was still alive. He's gonna wake up now. Yeah. yeah. So when the dead go close to his face, all of a sudden, yeah. E of the three. E of the three. Was it the E of the three? It oh, would have been. It must have been. It, well, it, yeah. It certainly didn't uh, didn't come across as not being. You know, it was a, yeah. it was a shock. It was a scare. Perfect. Love that moment. Yeah. And what was amusing? Did you notice that uh, the the level of detail that David Fincher put in that scene? He actually thought about. Well, it seems as though that John Doe had a bit of a routine. Every day, uh, or every every now and then, he he got himself an air freshener, an Alpine air freshener. Yeah. And whenever the smell got a little bit too bad, he added another air freshener, and it just showed they're all just yeah. hanging from the ceiling. And this is this is what David Fincher did. He actually sent a letter to the uh, to an air freshener company because it wasn't he wasn't intending on having right. you know he was just going to have a couple of air fresheners um, and they just sent him a whole box and they said well what are we going to do with the box? He said well we'll just we'll just put them all out in the set every single one yeah every single one so it's like this beautiful um, it's like a walk Christmas isn't it. It may, yeah, it's a white. It's into the woods. It's all these little iPan trees. Yeah. You know? um, should we talk about that while we're this close to the Illuminati? Let's just. No, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but the the it's like a mobile. You know how babies have mobiles. The yeah. fact that sloth has actually been reduced to a vegetative state. He's no more and no more less coherent than a than a newborn baby at this time. And he's got all these alpine mu- mobile just just ho- waving in the breeze. It's such a clever bit of art direction and set decoration, and and it just works beautifully. Yeah, I love it, and it's gross. Oh no, it 
<laughs> it's gross. But to imagine that, to imagine that somebody could actually be in that situation, and to think that in this world, well, judging by our situation right now, anything is possible. It's not looking too good for us, man. It's not. But the, well, yeah. well, I just don't know what's going to start for us. Come on, just humor, think, humor. Let's take our mind off our present situation. Let's and focus think on. Think about what's funny about Seven. <laughs> yeah, there's a scene where the uh, in the in the police stu- in the police. I always say police studio. I mean the police station. station. Yeah. Um, there's they're all having an important discussion about the Seven Deadly Sins, and uh, all of a sudden there's a phone ring, and then the guy picks up the phone, and he says. This isn't even my desk. Then hangs up. And I was like, "What? What's with that?" I love it. I <laughs> love that moment. And it was on. It was actually one of the quotes that they have on the spine of an Empire magazine once, because they always quote the most unbelievable quotes. But yeah. you know, something make you think, "Oh, what's that from?" And then the next month, they reveal who the quote's from. I didn't get it, and I, I, it bothered me for for a whole month until they actually revealed who whose quote it was. It was a police lieutenant in seven right. who answers the phone and says this isn't even my desk and then hangs up it belongs in a in a comedy film it belongs in lethal weapon in fact i thought it was lethal weapon right but it wasn't it was seven and i couldn't believe that i didn't get that joke reference there's also the joke reference of the um the vibrating house when they have morgan freeman over for dinner and, oh uh, of course yeah. They're, yeah they're living right near the the train track which makes me think that they're either in chicago because they have an elevated train but yeah i mean the whole idea of the city in in seven is it, it, it's not new york it's not chicago that's kind of it's so dark and it's so wet it's raining every, all the time yeah every time the in the city it's just rain rain miserable dark but when they get out of the city it's beautiful sunshine yeah well that's isn't that such an odd contrast to actually take the darkness away into the light in such a way when it's the most depressing moment for well, at least for Brad Pitt's character I'm sure Morgan Freeman went home and thought oh there goes another day closer to retirement but uh, yeah. yeah then there's the whole scene the most famous scene of the whole film it's in the box what's in the box what's in the box what's in the box what's in the fucking box What's in the bar? Zach Braff actually um, quoted that in uh, Sesame Street. Acc- well, not accidentally. I think he put the reference in there yeah. very cleverly. <laughs> I thought, no, you didn't just do that. That's a- What's so brilliant about that part is yeah. um, Kevin Spacey's performance. He's just so weird and yes, scary. You know, he's, t- he's talking about how he he's envies his life. Yeah. And... When they're on the way there and he's in the back of the car and he's sort of just bobbing from side to side, like <laughs> you're like a little excited child. He's like, oh, I really can't wait for you to see it. And you know, he's, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre. Yeah, it is. But it's a very understated performance. Yeah. It's a very um, minimalistic. What Kevin Spacey does there is he doesn't act like a villain. He acts like a person who is honestly feels as though he's in complete control. Yeah, and in his own world, and he, he's doing what he believes is right. Yeah, completely in his own world, and I think it's such a strong, understated performance that didn't get any uh, nomination. I'm surprised because it, sometimes acting is not acting. Yeah, do you know what I mean? The fact that that um, some actresses and some actors seem to get Oscar nominations just because they are saying big they have big brush characters that can say lots of monologues in front of the camera but, but there's the other side the ones who actually don't that take away yeah but i suppose his performance in american beauty which he did win the oscar for is very understated as well very similar you're right yeah so in a way they were probably just um, and do you think seven's the kind of film that the oscar committee would really latch on to they didn't know at all. They didn't like it's not their it. type of film, though. No, is it? there was nothing on the. I mean, the score was really dark, mm. really dense, dark, foreboding. Love that score. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's it's uh, it's just not a very uh, not a fun thing to play in front of all your peers. Which is wrong for the Oscars to think that way. Well, they don't like sci-fi either. I mean, come on. I mean, Sigourney Weaver was the first actress uh, to be nominated as an actress in a, in a science fiction yeah. film which it shocks me shocks me because science fiction is such a 
you know, I, I think actors sometimes go into that genre and just pretend that they just play having playtime. They don't take it seriously enough. But Sigourney Weaver came in and she she really changed that. Was that for Alien? The first one? Aliens. The, the second, second one. one. Yeah. From her, you bitch! Like with films like Schindler's List, it, they sort of have to nominate it. It has to be part of it because it's such a it's an yeah. event. That film's an event. Well, Seven's not really an, an event. No, it's a uh, it's a it's an experience. That's exactly. It's, what it a, is. it's a feel feel bad movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a feel bad. If you're ever in a really good mood, it's sort of watch this film. Yeah, just... but it's not at that that bad i mean I, I like i say i mean there are some films that i can't watch because they are too dark right requiem for a dream that's tough miserable miserable film yeah. but i think it's all it's all down to the fact that morgan freeman and uh brad pitt oh uh, what's in the box are two detectives working together in this film and uh there's, there's parallels between that and lethal weapon isn't there yeah and it but it's you know what I mean? It's yeah. like the really dark, not funny, lethal weapon film. It is, but there, it is funny because uh, there's so many moments where Brad Pitt is just talking and, and Morgan Freeman is saying, you talk too much, or, you know, yeah. like, you know, they're, they're, in the beginning, I think, they're very chatty. Well, he's very chatty in there. It's, it's cock- kind of cocky, yeah, cocky. Brad Pitt's very cocky in it, isn't he? Yeah. And then Morgan Freeman's the wise... Yeah, knowledgeable person. Yeah, but he's not an exposition man. Have you noticed that this? Oh, there's, there's not very little exposition in there. Well, oh, no, actually, he does. He does in the uh, police station where he explains all the, the seven deadly sins, what they are. Ah. Um, there's a couple of highlights in seven that I have to bring about the uh, the scene in the library uh, where they play uh, air on a G string. <laughs> that is actually the, the it's air on a G string. This is chord. Right. Air on G. Um, <laughs> you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. No, we're not talking about you girls. Oh my gosh, did I just answer back to the Spice Girls? Don't, just don't look at them. I'm sorry. They're, just, they're, they're miles away, but you know, they're listening. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, the, the, the library scene is, is one of my favourite scenes. And it's a montage scene. It's beautiful music. It's beautifully edited. And it flows and it takes you. Uh, I, lo- I love it. It's just, um, you know... I, I just love that. I dig that kind of a feel yeah. about the movie where they know, I know they're progressing. They're both working separately. They're looking at all these graphic images. They're looking at Incubus, Succubus, um, all the different things. And you're following that. You're just kind of in there with them. You're sort of investigating and, with them. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I love that kind of interactive feel to the film. And then you've got the scene with Gwyneth Paltrow and, uh, and Morgan Freeman. Yeah. The emotional, sentimental scene in the cafe where she tells him that he's she's pregnant yeah and he's pregnant too <laughs> I'm going to have a baby yeah because that's what happens ah, there's now yeah. two Morgan Freemans there's the seven Morgan Freeman and he gave birth to another Morgan Freeman which is Exposition Freeman <laughs> as, he's, as he's more well known in Hollywood <laughs> that doesn't make any sense that's more, it's more like Invasion of the Body Snatchers maybe and it's so and that's when you kind of get it if they didn't have that scene, then her head being in the box at the end. <laughs> have you got any problems with Seven? Problems with Seven? Yeah, do um, you think? Um, could have been longer. I, I, I wanted more. I wanted, you wanted more. I wanted there to be more murders. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, 20 deadly sins. I think it's my favourite Fincher. You, you, Fincher you can't film. change it. I mean, if, imagine if Michael Bay, for example, made Seven. Michael, How would that be? Uh, well, that would be... It wouldn't be seven. It would be 123. And um, there'd be aliens in it. Okay. Um, it, it Morgan Freeman would be played by Will Smith. No, it be exposition Morgan Freeman, now. Yeah, but played by Will Smith. <laughs> and uh, Mark Wahlberg would be doing Brad Pitt's part. Okay, Will Smith and Mark Wahlberg, yeah. Yeah. And there'd be lines like... <laughs> John Doe. You're about to be John Doe. <laughs> and the Seven Deadly Sins will actually uh, be the first ten minutes of the film because it's some, because that's not interesting. Enough. No, that's not interesting. 
the yeah, um, it's of, of the other 115 murders that are far more the um, right. the disturbing dildo prostitute scene would actually be a proper dildo and a big sex scene yeah with the, you'd see the prostitute yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, the only sin would be she was just a little bit too fat and Michael Bay doesn't like tubby people unless they're in a comedic role in his, in his movies okay so that's so basically it's not it is covering every single possible sin that he has a problem with and he's got 123 of these sins yeah okay and it would yeah the okay. name of it will, it would be coke 123 because it's a bit of advertisement <laughs> Coke, 123. Um, because maybe he gets he got the script for seven and went. You know what? I agree with all these things. <laughs> but I've got, What's wrong with well, that? Well, well, <laughs> He's John though. I've got I've got 123 things that really annoy me. My yeah, it's Coke, 123 pet pet hates. Oh yeah, of Michael Bay. <laughs> Michael Bay. Oh. <laughs> That's the best pitch ever. That is the best pitch. That is beautiful. Okay, so what about the title? The title seven. How it's it, how it's spelled. <laughs> Does that bother you? I'm still I'm still hooked on the Michael Bay thing. That's <laughs> great. It's like I don't have a problem with it. Um, yeah. Well, the the title had various incarnations on the poster. I mean, there was the uh, the the, um, the strike off uh, line line yeah. line crush ground line, which is seven. Yeah. Uh, but the most famous one and the one that everybody knows is um, is the seven spelt with the number seven instead of a V. Yeah. This has become quite common in films now to do that. I believe so. I believe so. And th there are a number of films. That, uh, and as soon as you're the one who actually likes to do lists that are longer than two items, um, <laughs> it's okay. we are only fitting. Seven. Of course. Scream four, but scream four. Mm. Step up to the streets. Thirteen ghosts, but thir number thirteen n ghosts. Lucky number s s eleven. Eleven. Evan. Seven. Evan. Or in, in other countries, it's just called eleven. Yeah. Okay. Too fast. Too furious. Simone or S one M O N E. One. <laughs> on me. Yeah. On me. Pokemon forever. Lay, le for yeah, okay, three. Lay, okay. Lay, okay. I don't know what the three, the three is actually supposed to be E. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got Leprechaun back to the hood. Halloween H2O. Which uh, I guess is yeah, water. The, yeah. But it doesn't make any sense because it's Halloween, um, Halloween 20. Yeah, well, uh, it was the 20th, it, 20 years, it wasn't it? 20 years, H20. But H2O being Halloween water. Halloween water, it doesn't make any sense. No. No. I was I was expecting submarines or Cape Fear. <laughs> Five null destination. No, 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 no. <laughs> anal destination. I thought it said anal destination <laughs> because the five looks more like the alphabet, alphanumeric. Uh, yeah, it's it, anal anal destination is probably a better film. It probably is. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, that, that's that's probably just a small sample as well. There's probably many more that we haven't touched upon there. Yeah. But look at that list. I mean, come on. Screen four, I mean the A four, yeah. But they didn't think about it when they did the uh, screen three. They could have changed the E to a, a, to three. a three, but they never did. Well, that would have made more sense because I suppose a three looks a little bit like an E. Yeah. But a four doesn't look anything like a. Hey, well, it does a bit, doesn't it? It does if you. <laughs> in, <laughs> I guess it does. As if you're on acid. <laughs> Which we're not yet. Um, you know, step up to the streets doesn't even make sense. No. I guess. I guess it's step up to the sequel. But is there a fear? I mean, are these are these films being afraid of of, of having a sequel number? I mean, some films don't seem to worry about that, but uh, I mean, a lot of films that I've noticed lately don't even have a numerical order to them. Um, I mean, you don't. Call, I mean, Harry Potter, for example, it's just the title of the book. Yeah, you don't have Harry Potter three, do you? Harry Potter four. I am X Men. It's it's not. I mean, X Men. Um, um, was it Days of Future Past? It's not called X Men Seven. No. If they called it X Men Seven, all of a sudden you you've kind of got a problem, because it's like, oh no, it's the seventh film. You know, it's like. It's interesting what they've done with X Men though. Yeah, the X Men one, two, three. We don't talk about three. 
Yeah. And then they sort of think, oh, we, we want to we wanna go back to the beginning What's it with now. Three? So it was awful. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, Brian Singer did the first two. The third one was done by the guy who did Rush Hour, the director. Oh no, Brett Ratner. That's him, he did it. Really? And yeah, widely regarded as okay, 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 okay. Yeah, ruining the franchise. But then you got, you know... But Singer came back in it, yeah. It wasn't not? Singer for the first one, it was... Ah, brain fart. Well, the fourth one was the uh, the kids again, wasn't it? The, um... The well, it's called, yeah, it's called X-Men Orange. Orange. <laughs> orange. <laughs> X-Men Oranges. It is. It was, do you remember that famous mutant orange? Uh, yeah. That's me. Um, Origins. Or, orangings. Yeah. <laughs> X-Men Oranges. <laughs> no one liked it because it was just a bowl of fruit moving around for <laughs> half an hour. Who it would? It's like grape expectations. It just would have been terrible. <laughs> oh, they get the golden raspberry for that. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so they sort of okay. reinvented it again. But then with Days of Future yeah. Past, it's got the old crew and the new crew. All oh, right, so they're basically a blending of all that was good. Yeah, so they have, to, they have to send Wolverine back, uh, back to the past to sort of save the future kind yeah. of thing. But sets up a completely different timeline. But that's that's not uh, that's X Men number seven. Yeah. So I mean, you've got you've got two things. You've got you got films that are scared to have a numerical uh, n- numerical um, um, suffix suffix as we call it the uh, yeah. um, the idea of being sequels is terrifying to certain uh, to certain things. But apart from Rambo, um, but even Sylvester Stallone says I'm not going to call it Rambo Four. It's going to be Rambo. Yeah, he did it with Rocky as well, didn't he? Rocky, yeah. It's going to be called. It's not going to be called Rocky Four or Five hey, or Six. Hey, you, you very rude. <laughs> <laughs> Grey Wolves. We're gonna call it Rocky Boboa. Yeah, Boboa, Boboa, Boboa. But so yeah, there's you know what, what's the Italian wrong? chairlift. Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, sponsored by Stenner. <laughs> <laughs> Stenner Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry. Oh, oh that's on your grave. Um, <laughs> so yeah, sequels. You know, I, 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 the thing is, I don't have a problem with numbers. No, I like numbers. <laughs> but sequels I have no problem with sequels but why do they have to be so cocky and have all these stupid let's put four instead of a exactly what's, yeah what's the, what's wrong with just putting layer cake you know what I mean or this is is this because text is so like people text rather than talk these days yeah that, and yeah. this is like text language isn't it well pokemon forever is obviously aimed at, towards the uh, the generation of text fingers yeah um so if they're going to go and see um pokemon forever at the cinema and you're going to text your friend and you're 12 um how are you going to text that f-o-r-e-v-e-r no for ever forever but really if it was proper it should have been pokemon forever's yeah, yeah. And it would have been proper then. So yeah, I mean they're obviously aiming aiming for an audience um, who, yeah, like you say, maybe the texting generation has uh, has kind of crept in there a lot. But then with Simone, yeah, we, we would be texting. They're binary numbers though. It's ones and zeros. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what they're trying yeah. to do there. But they could have done that with the Matrix. I mean, I'm surprised that Matrix was called Matrix Two and Three. What was it? Oh no, it's called Revelations and. Observations. <laughs> reloaded. Matrix reloaded. Reloaded is that the then, second one? Yeah, the metric. Metric. <laughs> metric. Metrics. But I'm surprised they didn't try anything clever there because that would have been more apt to have binary code. It, it would have done, yeah, but I think those last two Matrix films weren't very clever anyway. No, it didn't really matter. But um, how? Yeah. Yeah. I know we're going off topic a bit, but there's no such thing. We've been kidnapped by Spice Girls and we're no, no, we we What are we supposed to do other than just just talk about what we feel like talking about? How could they get it so wrong? The Matrix. The first one is brilliant. Yeah. Invented a new way of filming for that bullet time. Yeah. And yeah. then. Like, because I'm a fan of martial arts cinema, I like aspects of the second one, but the third one is just shocking. I, I, I just, I, I started watching the second one. I just lost interest. I didn't know right. who the people, who they were. Uh, everything was just being overly explained. Hello, Neil. Who are you? I am the architect 
I created the Matrix. I've been waiting for you. You have many questions, and though the process has altered your consciousness, you remain irrevocably human. Ergo, some of my answers you will understand, and some of them you will not. Concordantly, while your first question may be the most pertinent, you may or may not realize it is also the most irrelevant. Why am I here? Your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the Matrix. But not being explained. Yeah. It was like they're trying to hold things back and yet they're talking about stuff and not telling you. And it was just it was just a tell you movie. It wasn't a show you, it wasn't an expression, it didn't go I just didn't like it. I just didn't feel like I was watching a movie anymore. The first one, I felt like I was watching a movie. Yeah. I remember it, it was exciting. That, the day I watched The Matrix was a good day. I watched oh, the first yeah. Blade film and then The Matrix in the same day. Came out of Blade and went straight and watched The Matrix. Oh, what a day. I, I saw it first in Australia. Right? Um, was it different though? Well, no, it was the same. Well, actually, no, you're right. It, it was different. Um, the DVD in Australia, because a lot of it was filmed in Sydney. Yeah. And, uh, well, the Australians were treated to a, a DVD version that had an audio commentary because they talked a lot, a lot about Sydney, Australia and about filming in Australia. They released it for the Australian um, DVD, but we never got the audio commentary. Oh, that's interesting. They had the whole cast there um, doing the commentary, but we didn't get that. It's unavailable in this country. That's very odd. But um, we watched it because um, my housemate at the time, she was really good at competitions. She won um, the Matrix competition, which uh, she got a DVD player, she got the soundtrack, uh, she got the, the, the DVD, The Matrix, and, you, are you ready for this? She was unplugged she, out of the system and put into the real world. <laughs> she, was, she was sent uh, a, a life-size uh, cardboard cutout of Neo. That's terrifying. And <laughs> it was amazing because what we did is we used to beat him up. We actually did. Um, we, 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 uh, my housemate, um, who was into taekwondo, used to practice kicking, and so we had we had the interactive version of the Matrix that had the commentary and and Keanu Reeves <laughs> to kick, kick, kick the shit out of. That's great. It was great. I mean, um, I, I can't swap that experience because I watched it here and I thought, well, uh, I don't have my cardboard cutout or anything here now, so it's kind of sad. Aww. No. But yeah, so it was a bigger. Uh, I felt as though it was a bigger experience in Australia than it was here. Right, because it's just so much in it, isn't it? You know, really, it's so many. Dense. Yeah, it, at first, he's just a computer hacker, then he gets taken out of that world. But I love that right. part where he just sort of wakes up and he's like, "I know kung fu." He's like, "Show me." And then they have that little fight, and that's just brilliant. I love it. It's great film. It is. It's a classic, and the color of it. I just love the green. Yeah, and they actually reinvented the because up until then I think the the, the color of fear was always red, um, but they changed the the color of fear is became green, and green became that uh, uh, very a lot of films after that started to just use green as as a as a color scheme for for a, a fearful place to go into. Oh. And you'll probably notice that more and more that uh, green is the color of fear. And you can take that to the bank. Yes. Do you know what? It's too dark in here. Uh, we, we need Wait. to find. If we're going to escape from this room, we need to. Let me have a. Let me have a. Let me have a feel. Oh no! I think I've found. Uh, I found a light switch. Oh! Oh my God! Oh! Have you seen these really dressed people? There's, oh my God! They're the bodies. The they're, four, they're the Backstreet Boys. Oh no! There's five. There's a little bit of that one over there too. All oh, right. Uh, yeah, that one's Brian. If I remember correctly, Kevin. didn't the Spice Girls have an irrational fear of the Backstreet Boys? They did! Obviously, because they were about at the same time and there was obviously a rivalry because they're both... I think I've got an idea. No, I mean, that's Howie. Is that Howie? Oh my god, what have they done to Howie? AJ? Andy? What would John Doe do? I've had an idea. If we... If we sort of... Take, if we take two of the the ones that aren't as badly disfigured, skin them, and wear their flesh onto, on our faces, we we could conceivably scare the Spice Girls and escape. Do you know what? As far as they know, these are dead. 
Yes. So, so they'll be like risen from the dead, and they'll think that, that the other ones will be yeah. rising. So they'll yeah. Do, you, you think this? Do you think this will work? I think this will work. Let's do it. I think it's a genius idea. I it's, think it's the best thing I've heard in a long time. Yeah, out of I've, all the ideas I've ever had, this is my favourite. This favorite. is the, this is the best. This is the one. So so okay, which, which one? Well, how is how is over there, Brian? Well, can I have this one because he's got a bit of a beard? Uh, which one's the one with the beard? That doesn't matter. It, it, that's that's Kevin. Well, I'm, I'm having you Kevin. Have Kevin. Okay, the tall one. I guess I guess Nick is the tallest because yeah, you know. Okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, have we got a knife? Oof. Oh, I've got one here. This is disgusting. Oh. Oh. Oh, can we just put some air pressures? Oh, this is really bad. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Right, I've got... Put the stretch all over my face now. Uh, hang on, your beard's not straight. Wait. How's that? How's the, okay. How do I look? Yeah, okay, okay. Go oh, like Kevin. You, you you look a little bit like him. You, you, your eyes are really dead. Okay, uh, they're just... Uh, just lift your eyes a bit. Stretch it. That's it. Right. Okay, I, I, I'm... Nick is a little bit shorter than I thought. Yeah, it's a bit stretched, the big foot, you can, you can do okay, this. Okay. Well, uh, right. Are they American? Okay, alright, okay. I'm, I'm Nick Carter. And you are... Kevin Richardson. I'm Kevin. Kevin Richardson. Yeah, man, I'm Kevin. Okay, let's go. Let's okay, go. where's the door? Let's do get out of here. Let's just knock. Okay, do, do you know any Backstreet Boys songs? Backstreet's back Quick playing games with my heart My heart Right, run! Swing! Hi, Spice Girls! I'm going to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends of Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know the two guys, yeah. They do the podcast, okay? So they're, how... They're, they're nice. They're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to the website, that will be www.roastingportions.com. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. People need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com, okay? You go down the right-hand side. You've got the social connections. You can can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to... uh, uh, The people who made that movie, you know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know, they made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh trees, it's like like being in a forest is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well, and if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay? Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and then and com- comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail.com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up, so. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm going to go, go plant a tree. I'm going to go tweet. You tweet, I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.